Hey, 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 my name is Forslings and welcome to Katawa Shoujo. Let's see where this is going. <clears throat> hey, John! <clears throat> Go away. Hey, John! Leave me alone! Come on, hey, John! <sighs> Let me sleep. After two nights of not being able to sleep at all, the last thing I want is to be woken when I finally manage to. It may be the last period of class, with textbook as my pillow, but I'll take whatever sleep I can get by this point. See, John, even Shicha wants you to get up! I don't care what Shizune wants, leave me alone. Gee, hey, John, I'll just have to wait. Wait, Misha is going to... You! This is bad. I'm a... I, I, don't you have to... I can feel my face flowering to a scarlet red blush. The students still in class are sitting bold upright and staring at the shouting fool who was sleeping just minutes before. Damn it. Damn it. I let my head smack back down the table with a noticeable tut. <laughs> Misha's trademark uncontrolled laughter reverberates through the classroom. As I turn my mournful eyes to be best packed little Shizune beside her, she carefully adjusts her glasses, desperately trying to maintain a look of serious disapproval. Narrowing my eyes, I can see the badly hidden grin spreading across her face. It's too Shizune. Huh? She then looks away quickly as she crosses her arms tightly, barely on the edge of her control. Why are we still interacting with those two? Misha's laughter doubles in volume as she glances at Shizune. All I can do is drag my hand down my face in resignation. You two... monsters. Who was the one who slept in class, Hichan? Yeah, yeah, it was me. Cool. <sighs> Poor Shichan was having a fit trying to wake you up, weren't you? I move my eyes back to stand off Shizune, who with a single half of confirmation returns to look away with her arms crossed. Why was she doing that, exactly? <coughs> Sorry. Shizune wanted to give you the handouts the soups the teacher gave out while Hichan was sleeping. Handouts. I suddenly find two sheets of paper thrust down in front of my face. Following the hand holding them, I see the still pouting figure looking down at me with a distinct skull. I guess I really gave me the wrong here. Do I care for? Not necessarily. I can't say I do. Uh, sorry about that. No dice. Her irritated face still holds. I clasp my hands together. And flick my hand downwards in apology, except I don't. Very, very sorry. Yeah. I actually don't mean it. She huffs and simply drops the papers on the desk. Damn! I look up over my head to see Shizun and Misha signing frantically to each other. A look of frustration on Shizun's face. It looks to be less of a dialogue and more of a tirade. Punctuated with sidelong glance at me to say it's unsettling is under understatement. Ah. Uh, the two suddenly stop signing and look at me in unison, both having exactly the same look of disapproval. In one fluid motion, Misha's hand suddenly extends high above me and comes rocketing down. Before I can even hope to react, my head is set bouncing up and down like a jack in the box. I quickly bring my hands to my head, more of a reflex than actual pain. What was that for? I open my eyes to see the two greeting each other while exchanging an enthusiastic thumbs up. She just says she forgives you now, he chan. Yeah, but if I, if a guy was to do that, can you imagine? Could you forgive me with little less force next time? I look at the two with a blank face. Mission Susne. One. He's a nil. That's a little bit of a tennis reference. Tennis? Yeah, I mean, not really. Wait, no, it's... Ah, tennis is 15 love. Nil. Okay, that is just sports, basically. Anyway. Oh, 
of shit challenge. She also says you should check your student mail for more often. Is this what it is? I think I know what this is. Okay, this is the similarity to the previous rod. I feel like this will happen in every route, basically. She produces a bright yellow envelope and hands it over with an exuberant grin. Strange, who could have written me a letter? Now is not time and most definitely not the place to find out for. Giving up on the nap, so cruelly stolen from me. I wipe my forehead and slowly get up, putting the sheets and envelope in my bag before swinging it over my shoulder. I take a step back and move to depart with a small bow, while Misha clutches her sides, laughing, and Shizune nods back in curt farewell. I join the flow of students, exiting the open door, and turn the corner into the hallway. Only to end up face to face with Hanako. Whoa! Hey Hanako! Good afternoon, Hisa. Si silence falls between us as busily chatting students pass us by. She's fidgeting constantly, her eyes drawn to her rather unremarkable footwear. What do you mean? I take a bridge of my nose in my fingers while I blink my eyes heavily in an attempt to make things seem clearer. I barely st I'm barely staying awake as this. And the girl, you want to say something? What is it? Uh... I wanted to give you this. Hmm? She calls out a small rectangular piece of paper. I blink again to make out the text through barely open eyes. So it's starting to make out what's written. X two I totally was thinking it was something else right now. Oh damn I'm glad it's not what I thought it is. Because we are on Lily's route. Oh my god. Oh, that got me a little stressed here. Okay, X2, uh, bread loaf 1, whole grain cereal 1, time 1. T it's time or Tim? Actually, I need to check. I think it's time. But... Time. I was correct. Nice. A shopping list. I look upwards, raising an eyebrow. Hmm? He says, I, okay, that's weird. I'm unable to do that anymore. What the hell? Whatever. I could. I was capable of doing one on me. Anyway, I usually go shopping with Lily, but I can't come, so. You want me to run around for you? Uh, it's okay if you don't want to. I just wanted to be. Uh, She's panicking. I sigh. <sighs> He has another battle lost for this time by weekly fought surrender. I smiled tiredly and dressed her hand on her head to calm her down. It's fine. I was going to go anyway. Just the southern list. She does then both deeply, twice as if to make her gratitude perfectly clear. We were going to be outside the school gates at 6. Thank you. I was going to get it, but I need to study for the test tomorrow. There's a test? Te oh, that's right, science. How are you doing with it? She brightens ever so slightly. I've been spending more time on it before. Uh, on it than before. I, I think I can do okay. Good work then. She's, she too starts smiling and much more nervously than I had that. I have full confidence that I can define it, it without any extra studying, but the fact that she's putting in the effort instead of just reading the library is heartening. I'll grab your stuff and take it to your dorm in the evening. See ya! With a small wave, we part ways. I'll go do my homework before meeting Lily. I should be able to take care of it in time. Oh. Oh. I was totally sure Lily went on that trip already to her to her home. We'll see. Wrangling with particularly complicated math problem has caused me to be a little bit late for my meeting with Lily. Only a couple of minutes, but enough to make my steps smartly out in the courtyard and to the school gate. I make a right turn and start my way towards the small town below, leaving a few students turning the other way to the bus station. I slip my right hand in my pocket as I walk in the orange sunlight of dusk. 
Thankfully, the sweltering summer heats start to die down, making way for a pleasant cool breeze. When I stretch my hands high above my head, a familiar figure takes form, Kane, her right hand. Ah, Lily! She stops and turns around, sniveling, swiveling her head slightly to try and work out exactly where the voice came from. Hey you, it's me. I quickly catch up to her, coming in beside her and matching her slow pace as we resume walking. Good afternoon, Hisa. Hi there. I glance up at the sky. Actually, that's something I noticed myself doing a lot lately. I don't know why. Too. Like, just, you know, looking into the sky. Weird. A distinct tinge of orange discolors the clouds, washing the footpath in its light. Long shadows from the trees fall across the wide road down the, ho the hill. So, he saw. What brings you here? Just going to town to grab some groceries. Also, Hanako sent me. Hanako sent you? Yeah, she said she needed to study for a test tomorrow. I was going to come down anyway, so just buy her stuff as well. Unspoken is that Lily really could use some help to get food. But it's an obvious fact that neither of us needs to stay. It. Hmm. It's good to hear she's studying for it. I thought the same thing when she asked me to come with you. We continue walking down the street. The familiar sound of their cane echoing through the air as we go. Except for the occasional passing car and the leaves whispering in the branches. There is a blissful silence. Thank you. God, I can finally relax for the first time today. I glance over at Lily. That personal face of hers never seems to lack that air of relaxed confidence. I guess the same could be said for of her personality too. As she silently walks, her face remaining pointed to the street ahead of her. I look ahead and savor the cool air blowing over my face. This is probably the calmest moment I've had since the about face my life took so recently. To have it while walking to get some groceries. What a weird life. I feel the crumpled up note rubbing against my hand in my pocket and pull it out to check its contents. Let's see here. Eggs, bread, cereal, thyme, lettuce, shaved ham. That sounds like quite a bit to carry back along with your own. Yeah. Just how much does this girl eat anyway? My mind suddenly thinks that yes, there actually is a person beside me. Wait, I mean... <laughs> She laughs whole wholeheartedly. My, my, he saw. Her giggles punctuate her words, for she's making the effort to suppress them. Quite direct today, aren't we? Uh, yeah, you got me there. Still, it is quite a bit. No, it's not. It's normal. Right? Usually I go shopping with Hanako, so I know what she buys. It's the same thing every week. Uh, she good cook? She gives a nervous giggle. Nervous giggle. She a good cook. Like something just clicked in my mind about those words. You probably know what I'm thinking, right? Yes, it's about the scars and the possibility right now that clicked. Anyway, it's usually me who ends up cooking. I used to do so for Akira, so it's no problem doing for Hanako as well. You can cook, but... A short cool movie that amused Lilt emanates from beside me. I wonder if the fact that she seems amused by comments so often is actually genuine, or rather just from a want to make me more comfortable in addressing her blindness. There are ways around it. Some meals are more difficult to cook than others because of being unable to see what I'm doing, but it usually only takes a little more time. Fingers can double as very useful management tools, for example. It makes sense, but she'd have to be pretty careful not to hurt herself. I wonder how many times that's happened, given that it sounds like she's cooked alone for possibly years while Akira worked and her parents were gone. With that, the conversation trails off. Compared to the awkward silence of silences of Hanako, 
Lee seems generally content to say what she thinks and stay quiet when there is nothing to say. The slick ro road under my feet is bathed in an orange glow. The occasional fall of leaf crunching underfoot as we walk. I let out a deep yell, my lack of sleep coming back to haunt me. Did you not get much sleep last night? I couldn't sleep at all for the last two nights. Probably. Insomnia. Lee's face suddenly becomes worried. It feels like a personal failure every time she gets worried about my well-being. Even if it's generally nice to know someone cares. You have insomnia? Aren't you going to see the nurse about it? Nah, not real need. It's happened before a few times. My meds screw my sleeping occasionally. Ah, I, I'm sorry. Come on, it's not your fault. At least I shouldn't have any trouble getting sleep tonight. You do worry me sometimes. I... I worry you. I reach around and scratch the back of my neck. I kind of want to address this. I, I apologize for worrying you. I didn't know and I didn't want to. Hey, Lily. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to sound weird, but... Please try to forget about my heart condition. She looks kind of lost. I hardly blame her. I guess what I'm trying to get is, just don't treat me differently because of it. I don't think she does, for. She bows her head slightly, her white cheeks reddening almost imperceptibly. I, it's only natural to worry about, about those around you. Well, it's still nice to know there's someone like that out there. It may be somewhat embarrassing to say, but it's the truth. Lee takes a breath to regain her composure and manages a gentle smile, for her cheeks remain flushed. I mean, I would say she is not worried about you because of the heart condition, but in general, right? That's at least my point of view. The final downhill walk to the store passes in silence. Welcome! I suppose I'll get my stuff first and Hark was on the second round. I grab two well-worn red asses from the sack beside the entrance and pass one to Lily. Just as she did before, she lays it onto the ground and slides her retracted cane between the basket handles before picking it up back up with her right hand. When she takes hold of my arm her own, I'm surprised at just how fast this kind of casual contact became so natural, mostly due to necessity no doubt. Shall we? Sure. While we navigate around the store, the old person occasionally passing us pays us no heed at all. It's nice compared to the stairs and whispers around the city. As we reach each aisle, I quickly check with Lee what she needs and grab it along with what I want, putting our items into their respective baskets. It's an odd feeling to be dependent on so much for something so basic as shopping. Ada could be practically and nasty for her to pick out what she wants after all. Right. I'm pretty da much done with both my stuff and, and Hanako's. You needing anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go then. Only there is a queue a mile long, considering the store's only large enough to warrant one counter. Seems like it will take a while. Lee gives an inquisitive look, unable to see the reason for my complaint. Huh? The queue is really long, looks like we'll have to wait. How strange. Starting the same mood of resignation, where we reluctantly take our place at the end of the line. One person finishes, the line moves up. Another person finishes, the line moves up. By the time we finally reach the head of the line, I'm so close to dozing off that Lee has to gently pat me on the back for me to move up. He's a... It's a... Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. She gives a short sigh of consternation as I move up getting the groceries for Hanako and me put into separate bags. <sighs> Thank you, please come again. We will, don't worry, we will. <laughs> By the time we emerge from the store, Lee is holding a single bag while struggling to carry four. Both hands well and truly full, it's a lot of work, but thankfully, the items in them are light. 
Laura Mart. Even without looking skyward, it's obvious that a surprising amount of time has passed. The road outside being dark and lit by street lamps. Once Lee retrieves her cane, we settle back to the dormitories the way we came, leaving the welcoming warm glow of our store. Despite the road being empty of cars, the full packs abundantly make up for the lack of noise, constantly clunking and squeaking together. My, my, it's always good to find that you're eating well. I'm a growing guy after all. I need to eat all I can. Technically, he's 18. I mean, then again, guys grow a little bit longer, right? Yeah, we grow up longer, actually. As far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I mean both cave wise and mind wise <laughs> we are ch we are like children no longer basically ah. hmm it must be nice being a man that sounded weird what Seemingly not noticing or ignoring my surprise in a completely out of left field comment, she continues on without missing a beat. Well, it doesn't really bother you when eating most of the time. Yes, it does. I get what you mean. Women tend to worry about stuff like that more than we do, I guess. What the? I. Yes, it does. Okay. Exactly. It makes me somewhat envious, to be honest. Well, it's not like we can outright ignore it. With an affirmative note, we continue our walk. Oh, that's right. What is it? Hanako mentioned your birthday was earlier this year. Do anything special for it? She gives a long pass, lost in thought for a few seconds as she recalls the event. Not really. It was just me and Hanako having a little party during the night after school. Oh, your birthday is supposed to be a big event, you know. Mm, I not I wouldn't say. I never had like a big event, and I don't complain about that. Sounds like a pretty lonely way to spend birthday, just her and Halako staying overnight. I wouldn't complain spending birthday with the closest person like that. Just and just that. Why would I? <laughs> Birthdays always felt like a family occasion for me. They were they they were there were a time when in spite of their full time jobs both my parents would make an effort to be there for the day or at least for a party beforehand. It reminds me of how Lily mentioned she hadn't seen her family in such a long time and even ended up moving away from Akira's house afterwards. But I guess it's the same situation as mundane as this. Considering her inability to read the packaging, just getting groceries would be a pain without somebody else around. In the end, she just has Hanako and me and Akira when she's off from work. Be that as it may, she still seems to have many more distant friends among the students, not to mention people like Yuko. It seems to be her own choice that there is such a separation between these two who are closer to her, those who are closer to her, sorry, and those who only she only socializes with. It humbles me to see how much Lee seems to have her life set up and going just as she wants. Yet Hanako is there for her to celebrate her birthday and I'm here helping her with shopping. It's a weird kind of symbiosis, I suppose. Are you alright, Hisao? Sorry. You just seem to go very quiet, that's all. Ah, uh, sir, I was just thinking. Oh. Ah, now I've piqued her curiosity. It feels kind of very overly personal to talk about for... Uh, what should we do? Come on, you know I want to talk, right? I don't want to avoid the subject. I want to... I want... Should he speak? Uh, which act are we on? Oh, there is no information about... 
Uh, wait, we started the act two for first. Okay, let's tell the truth. I want him to talk. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. It was just kind of. Uh, I was thinking about how we seem to have everything so sorted out, even with Hanako Lang. I can admit that even I kind of relied on you when I first transferred in. Yeah. I think it's a good quality to have. I turn to Lee, surveying her reaction. She's forcing herself to look forward and following her role quite a bit. Her face looks a bit awkward, as she was trying to find out just the right words. Lily? I would thank you, but assuming that I don't rely on the presence of others is too much. It would be wrong to think that Hanako simply depends on me with nothing in return. Yeah, I, I, well, yeah. She seems to have a bit of trouble saying it, even though it's largely what I thought already. If she tried so hard to maintain her independence as anyone would have had to eat her position, sorry or not, maybe she finds it hard to talk about her own needs. It's only now that there is uh, an omission in what she says for. I decided to follow it up largely in jest to avoid things getting too personal. Oh, and what about me? She suddenly runs ahead of me and turns, blocking me off. With a smile, she holds her hands behind her as she leans forwards. You're different. And with that, she turns back and continues to walk ahead of me, and you found spring in her step. All I can do is rise an eyebrow and give a taste green. I don't think I've ever seen this playful and teasing side of her before. So, I'm different. It's hard to work out the exact context, but knowing her, this ambiguity was intended. Our relationship has been changing, at the very least simply because I began to stand on my own feet more and started getting more curious about the situation of those around me. As to why, probably a mix of personal curiosity and I want to try to work out how to deal with my situation. I'm less sure of Lilifo, that's why her own statement, so similar to my own feelings towards her, throws me off so much. Watching her make her way up the street, cane tapping from left to right, I decide to settle the matter later and just smile. This is a nice sight to her, and I don't want to forget it. That was a nice scene. Short, but really nice. Oh my god. Eventually we get to the girls' dormitories, both my arms aging from a wave of two sets of groceries. Ah. <sighs> We're finally here. Phew! I bend down to wipe my forehead with the back of my hand. Lee stops in front of her door and sets down her back, fishing around in her pocket for the key. Thank you, Hiso. I really appreciate your help. Hmm? Oh, this is nothing. Don't really. It might be nothing to you, but it's definitely something for me. And with that, she steps through the door, closing behind her. I blink, those were nothing but honest things, but I can't help feeling something different about them. Anyway, I have something else to do before I can mull on that at my leisure. I turn back to the door to Hanako's room and proceed to knock twice in quick succession, the box still in my hand rustling together. Let's see if that was really two, two knocks. That was free. That was free. <laughs> I had to, okay? Because previously it was accurately, he said three times and it was three knocks. Now it's not two. After a couple of seconds, the door slowly opens. If one were to go closely, they could be forgiven for thinking it hadn't moved at all. I twist my head to the side to try and peer through the tiny sliver of a gap between door and the door frame. Hey, Hanako. I've got your stuff. <gasps> With that, she opens the door completely, making a plain room visible over her shoulder. Sparsely decorated, it's probably even more unremarkable than my room. I hold out my right arm, both backs almost pulling it straight back down with her wave. <sighs> Thank you, Hisa. I'm sorry to make you carry them all this way. 
It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Just don't make me do it every day, okay? <laughs> I pass the bucks to her as I give a light-hearted chuckle. After the initial transfer of waves, she managed to take them easily. I'll be off then. Night, Hanako. Good night. I'm see you in class tomorrow. Nice. With a deep bow, her grocery still held in both hands, she steps back and shuts the door. Those two are so good of characters. I like them both. It's a bit of a diff complete opposite to the other road. I mean, yes, I liked Misha, but at the same time, that one situation kind of ruined. Maybe not ruined, but kind of annoyed me. Like the fact that we had to do that, and the fact that she, uh, I guess, proposed it. But okay, and well, I mean, she's an ace, basically, meh. Over here is completely different. Like I both, I like both Hanako and Lily, and that's such a problem. But then again, uh, like so far, sure, we didn't get much uh, time with Emmy and Serene, but they are super likable as well. So it turns out more or less that actually my approach to getting this is a good one. Whoever you've met first, you go with the truth. We've cleared out the one that I think will be my least favorite. Like, more like I didn't like or dislike it, right? Kind of. Uh, at the start. And then we get better and better. That's very good. Anyway, making my way back to my own dorm, I put one back into my other hand to balance them out. Even as I do so, I can't g get this light-hearted smile to my mind. When I first met her, it would have been nearly impossible to imagine her like that. It did it. Feels like we've become closer in the past few weeks since I first got to know both her and Hanako. Can we have a look at the rinse job here? You see that? The time that I spent with her each day. The small exchanges of happiness we share. Those small moments of joy as I get closer to her. I'm far from certain, but I don't think these are just the normal feelings of friendship. I understand. Once I return to my room, I store away my groceries and begin getting ready for the night. I swap the school books in my bag for those I'll need tomorrow, pulling out the yellow envelope Misha gave me earlier in the process. I got so sidetracked by one thing after another that I couldn't deal with it earlier. Who could have written me, I wonder? The rain neatly ignoring the back of the envelope freezes me in my tracks. It's been so long since I've seen her writing. There's little chance I could have identified it as her shoulder wise. Iwanako. Why should she have written me? I can't think of any good reason for her to do this. I almost don't open the letter, but there would be little point to that. If I just left it alone, it mer its mere existence would know at me until I did something about it. So I opened it. I looked down the piece of paper in my desk. It's bright and summery decoration beaming happily at me. The lettering is in pink, jarring badly with the yellow sunflower border of the card. The handwriting is neat, the characters having been write, written thoughtfully and with an unusual amount of care. I'd barely given the letter a second thought when it was given to me, but now I can't get its contents out of my mind. We have to read it again. Mm. Ah, okay. While I'd like to say that I don't know why she used such an old-fashioned method of communication considering a phone call or an email would be both much faster and easier, the answer feels obvious enough, given the content. A letter leaves a comfortable distance between the sender and the recipient. Unlike a phone, it isn't required that you engage in conversation, and unlike email, there is less expectation of an immediate reply. Statements such as, the third year seem to be very anxious about the final exams, and it's so weird to think we are already seniors in it, are just small talk. 
Small talk that could have been achieved by simply replying to any of the messages I sent her while in hospital. The ending for is that reason she sent this. The last couple of lines added almost as an afterthought. I wonder if we'll meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't. It's a segment that should hurt. I've always heard breakups are nasty stuff, but it feels like this is simply a reaffirmation of what we both already knew instead. Is the preceding text no more than small talk that makes me feel most uneasy. I can't figure out why, no matter how long I sit there, here and look down this bright and summery piece of paper. If you'd like to correspond with me, by all means, write back. It's plainly obvious that this is not the type of letter to be replied to. In the end, this letter is no more than a simple abdication of responsibility, a final statement to reassure herself that our relationship is over. I mean, it's never actually started to begin with, technically. I mean, there was confession and that's about it, right? Sure, she visited, but there was no mention of you getting into a relationship afterwards. Anyway, as such, I find I have a little problem in scrunching the letter and envelop into a ball and tossing it to the waste bin, ridding myself of its existence. I go to bed with mixed feelings, cheated out of a pleasant evening by this intruder from the past. Ironically, it takes me a while before I can manage to sleep. But I managed. And now, I'm actually ending the episode. We'll see where this is exactly going tomorrow. For now, hope you enjoyed, hope you have a wonderful day and... See you in the next one. Bye-bye.